Hey everybody and welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome to this channel. I'm David Townsend. This is The Net Academy where we are learning networks together. And on this video, on this part of what this is and what I'm going to go through is really more detail, more insights. It's a continuation of Juniper Network's MIST solution. Now, if you don't know what the MIST is from Juniper Networks, if you don't know where it is and all the many benefits it brings to the enterprise network and business, then I highly recommend that you check out this link just to get a little bit of insight into what it actually is. But on this part, what I'm going to be going through is what's called wireless assurance and all the many deep insights that this wireless assurance actually brings. But what is wireless assurance? Just quickly, what wireless assurance is, is it's the ability to see via artificial intelligence, those deep insights into how users are connecting to that Wi-Fi network and are they actually having a great experience? And generally speaking, just because you have a connection to a Wi-Fi network or any network, it could be wired, it could be satellites, it doesn't matter. Just because you have that connection doesn't mean you're actually getting a great experience through it. And what Juniper Networks missed with Wireless Assurance is doing is it's allowing the operator, the operational team, to see if a user is connecting to that Wi-Fi network, to that wireless LAN on that access point, what is their experience like and how is that in their experience being impacted by Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi events? So if you think about it, look at ourselves with our devices and our handheld mobile phones, our laptops, our iPads, etc. we're roaming around. But as we roam, we're typically roaming from one AP to another AP. Additionally, there could be Wi-Fi interference. So think about adjacent channels on that same frequency band. Or there could be non-Wi-Fi interference. Lights, for example, can induce some form of non-Wi-Fi interference. But then also think about when you connect to that Wi-Fi network, there's X amount of things that's got to happen, such as DHCP, such as DNS, such as ARP into the gateway, maybe getting some form of authorization. And what Wireless Assurance is doing for all of this and plus a lot more, we're going to go through it on the user interface in this video, is it's giving the operational team the insights into the what's happening on that Wi-Fi network. What's going wrong? Where is it going wrong? How is it going wrong? What's impacting these end users, i.e. ourselves? But also through AI, what do you need to do? What does the operational team need to do to deliver that best experience actually possible? So in this video, we're going to go through first, what are these service level expectations? I haven't mentioned that yet, that's deliberately. But what are these SLEs? What data actually forms these SLEs? What are they broken into? And then we're actually going to go into the user interface and see all of those SLEs, those service level expectations, and those deep insights that you can get on Juniper Network Smith Solution. So keep watching. I promise you this is going to be a very exciting video. But for now, let's just start with those service level expectations. So let's first start off and start going through what is a service level expectation? What is an SLE? What does it actually mean? And this is a, a key concept when we start looking at the wireless assurance in terms of all that data that's contained in that MIST cloud. But first, let's just start off with a little bit of a drawing and we'll build up the information from there as always. So this is going to be my drawing for uh, the, the cloud. I, I really need to get better with my drawing, I know. But if you watched the last video, if you've done any reading on Juniper Networks, you know that the MIST solution is a cloud-based solution. It's just up there in the cloud. The MIST doesn't have an on-premise controller, which is controlling all of those access points and giving it all of the conf configuration. All of that configuration comes from this MIST cloud just up there. And all of the data, all of that telemetry is also sent up to the MIST cloud as well. So obviously that is a huge advantage in today's world where everyone is moving to a cloud-based solution. But not only is MIST in the cloud, it is also built on something called microservices. Now, I don't know the full ins and outs, the full details on what a microservice is, but what I like to think of a microservice is, I like to picture a thousand piece puzzle and obviously each piece of that puzzle is representing a piece of that image, a piece of the overall picture. 
And using that same concept with a microservice, there's many microservices that build up that picture, that build up mist. And because it's built on microservices, what Juniper can do is take away any of the pieces of that puzzle, and yet magically that solution remains up and running just all of the time. And it allows MIST to be updated weekly as well. So if you read MIST documentation, you actually see every three or four weeks typically there's a whole new batch of features that have been updated. So microservices, but also MIST is utilizing several different forms of artificial intelligence. AI is a big buzzword these days, and I truly do believe in it because it's just proving, and it doesn't matter about industry, it's just proving to, to solve real world problems. Now, in the case of networking, where we've got all these devices in the network from the access points to the switches to the WAN routers and all the devices and clients actually being connected, the artificial is understanding that network. It's understanding what's happening on the network through all of the telemetry that's actually being gathered. And AI is thus able to determine this is the root cause of that networking issue, whatever it may be. And this is the steps you need to do, or this is what you need to do to actually resolve that, to give the best client experience possible. So Juniper Networks has got the Mist Cloud built on AI, built on microservices. And I'm just going to draw a, a big box just under here and I'm just going to call that your networking or network infrastructure. So that would be your switches, that would be your access layer switches, that would be maybe your distribution switches, maybe it would be your campus fabric, maybe your core routers, maybe your WAN routers, it doesn't matter. Generally speaking, all that network infrastructure, all that wired connectivity is what I'm referring to here. And that is obviously going to have connections up to that MIST cloud. But underneath the network infrastructure, specifically connecting to those switches will be missed access points. So I'm just going to draw a few access points or boxes to represent those access points. And there we go. I think four is enough. And typically these access points are going to be powered by the switch using PoE or maybe PoE plus. So it's typically around about 30 watts per port or maybe PoE plus plus which is about 100 watts of power per port, etc. But basically just providing those access points with particular power, whatever it may be. So you get the idea, basically the switches are providing power over ethernet to those access points. And that's important because we need these guys up and running, don't we? Otherwise, how are we gonna connect wirelessly over Wi-Fi to the network? And I'm just going to change color now because then we've got our devices here, haven't we? So we've got our Wi-Fi devices, our clients, which is really ourselves. It's ourselves with our mobile phones, maybe with our tablets, maybe with a laptop, or maybe it's some kind of wired till or wireless till in a in a retail, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But any device which is connecting over Wi-Fi. And these devices are connecting to these access points or to a particular access point and what the mist ap i'm just going to draw mist here so we know we are referring to a mist access point what the mist access points are doing is it's seeing these devices connecting to their ap particularly to their wireless lands which will be typically represented by a service set identifier or ssid but it's seeing these devices connecting and it's learning a lot of states of telemetry for each device, for each client that is connecting to each one of these access points. And it's doing so every minute. And so every minute, the access points are sending to the Mist Cloud over 150 plus states of telemetry, 150 states of data. And this is important for AI because AI needs a huge amount of data. It's how it learns what's happening on the network. It's learning what's normal, what's normal behavior on the network. And thus it's able to determine very quickly and very efficiently, ah, this is wrong on the network, so to speak. And this is what you need to do to resolve it. It needs that data in the first place. And that data in the first place is coming from here. So as I was saying, for the access points, they're learning who are the devices connecting to it and all the states of telemetry and sending all of that states of telemetry to the MIST cloud 
every minute for every client device that is connected. That's a lot of state of information. But let's ask a question. If you are that user on Mist, you have access to the Mist platform, do you want to sift through? Do you want to search through? Do you want to go through 150 plus states of information every minute about every AP or from every AP about the devices that are being connected? The answer to that is obviously no, because that is a huge amount of data. That person will never see the end of that tunnel, will never see light of day ever again. And so coming back to the service level expectations, is what MIST is doing, what the AI is doing, is it's classifying all that data into service level expectations. And as I said, that is just abbreviated to SLE or SLEs. So we got our service level expectations. And on Juniper MIST, there are different SLAs depending on the technology domain. So you have particular service level expectations or SLEs for wireless. So specifically for Wi-Fi or wireless, there's actually seven service level expectations. There's also service level expectations for wired. That's referring to the switching environment. There's three service level expectations in the wired switching SLEs. And when you look at the WAN-SD-WAN, there are three different types of service level expectations in there. So in summary, all that huge amount of data that's been learned over or from these devices, from these clients, from ourselves that are connecting to the MIST access points, it's been sent to the MIST cloud and the AI is learning all of this data and then it's classifying it into a service level expectation, either for wireless, wired, or WAN. But obviously the focus of this video on this part is talking about wireless assurance, i.e. the wireless service level expectations. But what does a service level expectation actually mean? For me, the answer to that, the, give the giveaway is the title itself, service level expectation. So if you put yourself in an enterprise networking world, you're the operations team, you're that, you're the administrator for that Wi-Fi network, you define on MIST in that SLE, in that service level expectation, what do you expect in terms of experience for those Wi-Fi clients that are connecting? Do you expect them to be connected to your Wi-Fi network within a certain amount of time? Do you expect them to have a certain amount of stability when they are roaming from one access point to another access point? Do you expect there to be a certain coverage and a certain throughput? And do you expect those APs to be performing at a particular health or state of health? And a lot more. You are defining via seven SOEs, and I'll name them in just a minute, what do you expect for that Wi-Fi network? And if that expectation is breached, as I call it, or not met, using AI, you have the insights into, okay, why was that not reached? Why was that SOE not reached? Who was impacted by that? What client was impacted by that? Where were they impacted by that? How were they impacted by that? Was it DHCP? Was it DNS? Was it authorization? Was it just sticky Mac? Or did they fail to fast roam? Whatever it may be. And the insights into how to resolve those issues as well. That's AI for you. That's really powerful. But what are the seven service level expectations for wireless assurance? Well, in no particular order, the number first one is successful connects. For me, successful connects is very binary. It's are the Wi-Fi clients, the devices, the laptops, the iPads, et cetera, et cetera, are they connecting to your access point to that wireless LAN? Yes or no. That's why I say it's very binary. And you don't really define an SLE for successful connects because you want all of those clients to be connecting successfully to the network. Obviously, if they're authorized and have the right password, et cetera, that's in a different SLE. But you want those clients to be connecting successfully and under successful connects there is classifiers to classify out if a SOE is not met in successful connects why is it not met and that's where the classifiers come in we'll go on to that in more in more detail when we start looking at the user interface in a few minutes time but the other SOE is time to connect 
So if a user has connected successfully to that Wi-Fi network, time to connect is then given the insights into how long did it take to connect to that Wi-Fi network. And again, that operator, that administrator, the operational team for that Wi-Fi network defines what is acceptable for them? What do they expect? Is it one second, two seconds, three seconds, whatever it might be? What's their expectation in terms of user experience connecting to that network in terms of time? So there is time to connect. And again, if that is not reached, if that expectation is not met, the AI gives insights into why is it not met? How is it not met? What do you need to do to resolve it? The third SLE or service level expectation is coverage. So the coverage is all about what's the signal strength from access point to client and from the client to the access point. Obviously the APs, because they've got PoE or PoE plus or maybe PoE plus plus, regardless, they have a lot more power than these devices, than our handheld phones. For obvious reasons, the battery is just a lot smaller and thus it's not as strong as an access point. But the missed SOE for coverage is able to see what is that signal strength on the uplink and on the downlink? And also, is there a weak signal? So as a device moves away from the access point, gets further away, the AP is struggling to hear that device. It's getting further and further away. It's just struggling to hear it. And thus, at that point, you would hope it starts to roam to another access point, ideally. But the missed SOE for coverage is able to track and analyze and give the insights into that signal strength and the RSSI. Another service level expectation is capacity. Capacity, there's actually quite a few different uh, parts when it comes to capacity. But the way I like to think of it is what's the capacity of the access point for connecting all of these devices? And is there any interference both from a Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi perspective that could be impacting the capacity of the AP to keep those devices connected. And also, are there too many clients connected to this access point as well? Generally, what's the capacity of that access point? And is it being impacted by external events like interference? What's the capacity of the AP to provide that great experience to those connected devices? And I said the word a few minutes ago, but also roaming as well. So we're portable, aren't we? Ourselves here, we move from one AP to another AP. When we're done there, we move to another AP. And when we're done here, we move to another AP, etc., etc. We're portable, we move around. And the roaming is given the insights in that SOE of what was the general stability like of that client device as it was roaming around? Did it fail to do a fast roam? So a fast roam, I think it's under 500 milliseconds, something like that. But if a device is able to do a fast roam, but decided not to, it done a slow roam, why did it do that? Is there anything you can do from the networking perspective? So under the roaming SOE, you're getting all of those insights. And also throughput. Throughput is another SOE or service level expectation on the wireless assurance or WA on Juniper's Mist. Now the throughput here is not the actual throughput. Anyone can do actual throughput. I, I worked at a test and measurement company for eight years and throughput is very straightforward. Frame sent, first is frames received, the difference generically speaking is your throughput. So throughput is straightforward. This throughput though, for this SOE, is the probabilistic, it's the ideal throughput that you are getting on the network. And that is based on all the other SLEs, such as capacity. So if the AP has too many clients connected and Dashaw has interference, or maybe clients are roaming away, it's taken all of this external information, all these other SOEs into mind and actually calculating what is the ideal, the probabilistic throughput you could get on the network. And again, you define what your expectation is for that throughput. And the last one I want to mention is AP Health. So AP Health, it is how it sounds. What's the general health of that missed access point? Has it been dis disconnected or does it have low power? But also using AI, the AI is able to understand certain scenarios. 
So if an AP goes offline, just for example, that's going to be shown, that's going to be obviously revealed in those insights and obviously your SLE, your expectation will not have been met. But let's say you've got a site with 10 access points, keeping it simple, and suddenly go all of them go offline. The AI is able to determine using the insights that actually that's not all the APs going offline. It might be the networking infrastructure, i.e. the switch, that's just failed, that's gone offline, and thus it wouldn't be shown in AP Health because that's not an AP Health issue. That's actually came from somewhere else in your network infrastructure. So that is what a service level expectation is. It's in summary, defining what is your expectations in terms of experience for those Wi-Fi connected devices that are connecting to that wireless network. What do you expect in terms of time to connect, in terms of roaming, in terms of capacity, coverage, throughput, AP Health, and thus the MIST AI Insight is able to see and give you the insights into if that SOE, if your expectation was not met, why was it not met, where was it not met, who was impacted by that, and again, the AI will give you recommendations on how to resolve those issues. But that's enough of me talking, that's enough of me drawing for sure, as always my slides gets pretty busy pretty quickly, but now I suggest let's actually go straight onto the user interface and let's actually start seeing for ourselves, what does the MIST UI actually look, at, look like? What are all those wireless assurance SLEs I just mentioned? And let's actually go into what is a classifier, subclassifiers in some case, and really the deep insights into those service level expectations. And so here we go, here is the MIST user interface. You can see here I've got my own MIST org just called David Townsend for obvious reasons, but I'm not gonna be showing that because honestly I've only got one MIST access point. So the roaming SOE that you can actually see here, it's not going to show anything in my MIST org because I've got no AP to roam from and to. So it'll be blank. So I'm going to be showing this platform instead. But what are you looking at? What are you actually seeing? Well, first, obviously, this is just the, the MIST org name. Obviously, you can read that. And what we are seeing is we are monitoring the service level expectations for the wireless domain, i.e. Wi-Fi. So all of that state of data, all those rich data telemetry, which has been sent from those access points about all those connected clients every minute, it's been stored in this wireless SLE page. And for the switches, that would be under wired. For the SD-WAN and WAN routers, the SOXs and the Session Smart routers, or SSRs, that's obviously gonna be under WAN. There's also location and the ability to go into further insights. So that's generically, generally, where the SLEs are kept, where they're stored, where they're shown. And what you're seeing here is the ability as well in this box to really define a period that you want to search that data over. So on the MIST org, on the MIST platform, the data for the service level expectations is stored up to seven days. And you might be thinking, well, seven days isn't a lot. But remember, this is about experience first network, and this is about the experience of users. So if a user is experiencing DHCP issues or DNS issues, or they're not authorized, or failing authorization, or they're having roaming issues, if that happened 30 days ago or 60 days ago, then quite frankly, what would a user care? What would an, uh, an operator care about that? It's good information, but it's past due. It, it's no longer valid. Having seven days worth of data means these are the actions, these are the issues that are actually being experienced on the network recently. And this is actually what you need to work on, not 30, 60, et cetera, days ago. But you can define the period that you want to search through all of that data. And then the ability to actually go into, well, what type of coverage, what area, what site do you actually want to have all that data over? And just to give that further explanation, if I click on site, you can now see all the different sites for 
or that are connected to this MIST org that have MIST access points in this case. Or you could view that for the entire organization. So you get all the service level expectations, as you can see here, which I've named. We're going to go through more detail, but you get that single pane of glass view as such for the worst 100 sites by capacity or coverage or roaming and how they're actually scoring. Or you could do that at a, at a particular site level or down to a particular access point level or even down to a particular client level. So if I wanted to view all of that data that's come up to the Miss Cloud for the site live demo and I wanted to see the last seven days worth of data, then now we are actually viewing, you can actually see under the monitor service levels for the wireless domain, the last seven days worth of data. And here we are actually all the users on this timeline that have been connected. So 15 users, 41 users as I'm scrolling past. And on any system changes. So has there been a system change? Has there been a configuration change? Maybe one of the microservices such as Radio Resource Management or RRM has changed the, the power and the channel of the Wi-Fi frequency bands of, of those channels to improve end user experience, i.e. self-healing of the Wi-Fi network. But let's bring it back a little bit. Let's actually just talk about those service level expectations. And if I just scroll down a little bit, you can now see all those service level expectations I was just talking about. So just to recap, we are viewing the last seven days worth of data on the AI Mist Cloud for this particular site for the Wi-Fi domain, for wireless. And here you can see successful connects. Now remember, this is binary in, in my view. It's is or are users connecting to the network successfully? Yes or no? Time to connect is, are they connecting within your expectation? And if not, why not? And the coverage, roaming, all those SOEs I've just mentioned. Now, where do you define your expectation? It's actually under the settings here. So under settings, you can just change. Well, I want, just for example, to all my users to be connected within two seconds here. Or under coverage, you define what is that acceptable power, that acceptable RSSI, that accept, acceptable DBM that you want users to have in terms of being connected. And the roaming, how fast what's, you want users to roam from one access point to another. What is your ideal throughput? What do you expect for throughput? So the goal would be 20 megabits per second. And for all of these, obviously anyone that falls below, any device that falls below, in this case throughput, below 20 megabits per second, it's going to be identified, it's going to be tracked. But where is it actually tracked? Well, that's where the classifiers come in on the right-hand side. So all these little uh, blue lines here, these are what are called classifiers. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus in on a very easy one, successful connects. As I've said, are users connecting to the Wi-Fi network to the AP? Yes or no? If not, why not? And for the last seven days for this site, what this is showing us, what's showing you, what MIST is showing through AI, is that 80% of those users connected successfully. So obviously that's simple maths to understand that 20% 20, 20 did not connect successfully. But you need to know why, you need to know who, and you need to know what you need to do to resolve those issues. And that's where these classifiers come into it. So if I actually click on successful connects, what MIST is doing and showing now is we're breaking out, MIST is breaking out, that's missing 20%. And it's classifying that missing 20% into these different categories or different classifiers. So you can actually see for that missing 20%, 59% of that was due to authorization. So that's 59% of that missing 20%. 41% of that missing 20% was due to DHCP. 0% was due to ARP. Less than 1% was due to DNS issues. Less than 1% was due to actually the, the client just failed to associate to that wireless LAN. And for some of these, not all of them, but for some of them, they have subclassifiers. So if you look at DHCP, which is actually quite a sophisticated, but quite a complicated protocol, you've generically speaking got quite a few packets going backwards and forwards from client to server, such as your discover, your offer, your request, and hopefully your acknowledgement. And what MIST is showing here is for that missing 41%, it's subclassifying DHCP into that DHCP overall process. 
And it's now able to give that operations team, that administrator insights into what's actually gone wrong with DHCP. So in this case, 41% of that missing 20% was due, to, was due to DHCP issues. But what issues? And these subclassifiers are basically saying, actually, it was just that discover message that, that initial client sent out just didn't get a response back from the server. So of course, that's maybe some issue on the network inside, or maybe it's with the server itself. We could go more into detail with discover unresponsive and the AI will tell you, of course. But the main contributor is not DHCP, it's actually authorization because this is at 59%. So it's just a, bit, a bigger percentage. Now, what you can also do is you can see just under here, you could see there was 1,000 attempts or five attempts, but 1,000 attempts failed to connect to the network because of authorization. And you can also see the amount of users that fell below that service level goal, that expectation you, you defined. So that's 24 out of 112. But I like to work with the percentage itself. So in summary, we've got successful connects for this particular site over the last seven days. And we've got 20% missing or failed to meet your expectation. Now, 59% of that missing 20% is due to authorization. And now that I've selected authorization, we now get this timeline on the bottom. And before I go into this, just a quick explanation of what you're going to see, is the distribution is really distributing this percentage out onto the network. So you're able to see what Wi-Fi frequency band did this happen in. I was it Wi-Fi 4 or 2.4 gigahertz or was it in the 5 gigahertz band? What were the wireless, wireless LANs that saw these authorization problems or, or errors, failures actually? And a lot more, I don't want to say too much too soon, but under affected items is where we actually track the users I, it will show you what users failed to actually authorize to the network correctly and actually where they're located as well. But just scrolling down under timeline, you can see the overall timeline of when users were failing to connect to the network. And this is actually very helpful because underneath here, you can actually see any system changes or configuration changes. So here was a firmware upgrade and maybe there was a system change or a reboot. But if lots of users were suddenly failing to connect to the network. So you see a massive spike here. And one of these system changes was David Townsend updated the wireless LAN password. It stands to reason then that if the users suddenly increased in terms of failing to connect to the network due to authorization, that I didn't simply tell the users of an updated password and thus they're entering the wrong password, not their fault, my fault. But that's why there's this timeline here. And the general statistics here is, yeah, we've seen this 24 out of 112 users, but what users will go into, and this is out of 11 over 14 access points, so 79%. Now, as I said, the distribution is about the network. Yes, the network is important, but Mrs. Miss is providing that client to cloud visibility, including the network, and that the network is shown under distribution. And as I was saying, under wireless LANs, you get to see what wireless LANs saw these authorization errors, what access points saw these authorization failures, what were the device types that failed to authorize to the network, what were the frequency bands, were there any servers, so this would be a DHCP server. And coming back to the wireless LANs, you then get the statistics on that authorization, or specifically the authorization error. I keep saying error, it's not, it's a failure. So when I say, if I say authorization error, I do mean auth authorization failure, just to be clear. But what you're seeing here is obviously the different wireless LANs as well. And the big one I want to point out is the anomaly here. AI, as I've said, it's learning, MIST is learning what's normal behavior on your network, because it's got all this data, it just learns what's normal. And then it's able to detect and track and see and give the insights. As you can see here, well, yeah, we got users, 20% of users not connecting successfully to the network because of authorization. But it's then going to break into all these different wireless LANs and show you on this display what wireless LAN saw more of these anomalies, i.e. this wireless LAN here saw 7.52 times greater authorization failures, remembering it there, 
authorization failures compared to normal, compared to when everything should be fine and there's no authoriz authorization failures. So this has seen more authorization problems, more users not connecting correctly. So obviously we could go into this wireless LAN here by selecting that, but I'm not going to do that. I actually want to now show the affected items. And the affected items is about the users. So these are all the users, the 24 users that failed to connect to the network, to the Wi-Fi network because of authorization over the last seven days for this particular site. And then we've got all these lovely MAC addresses and Everest and Denali, and we can see what was the last AP that they were seen on, the wireless LAN, their MAC address, the location. Uh, but what we can actually see as well is if we click on Denali, I always like to pick on Denali, we now get this summary about this particular client, this particular person. And you can now see for the insights, it's now for client Denali over the last seven days. So note now that the service level expectations you're seeing here, they've changed because we are seeing client Denali's service level expectations. I Did they not meet that expectation, that experience that you expect them to get on your Wi-Fi network? And you can actually see the number one issue is not actually successful connects. There's three areas, there's three problems that's impacting client Denali's experience. Number one is actually time to connect. So when they do connect successfully, it's taking them too long to connect to the Wi-Fi network. So 89% of the time, it's taking them too long to connect to that Wi-Fi network. They're exceeding your expectation. Uh, fortunately, this is client specific though, and it's happening within the five gigahertz band. The second problem is that they're having capacity issues. So there is limited RF capacity 26% of the time because there's Wi-Fi interference on the network itself. And then we've got the successful connects failures as well. So this client is obviously not having a good time because when they are connecting to the Wi-Fi network, it's taking them too long to connect to the network. And when they eventually do connect to their Wi-Fi network, they're getting impacted by Wi-Fi interference. But MIST doesn't stop there. We can actually view the insights, the deep insights into this particular client. So it could be for a particular AP uh, and you can see all the AP events. But for now, let's just stay on client Denali. So I'm just going to click view insights. And now we've got the client insights. I We've gone into insights for client Denali for the last seven days because don't forget they were having authorization failures. Okay, I've, I'm correcting myself there. I'm very conscious not to say errors, but failures. But if I scroll down, we can see the timeline of the last seven days and when these events actually happened over the last seven days. And these are the events here. These are the client events. So there's quite a few in total. We've got the good, the bad and the ugly, the bad right at the end. So this client, as I said, Denali is not having a great time. And if I click on bad, we can now see all those authorization failures for client Denali. And if I scroll down, note there's a, dy a dynamic packet capture. So when there is an interesting event and an interesting packet, we missed the AP, will automatically capture those packets, those interesting packets, and send it to the MIST cloud for a, a, a technician, so to speak, to really look into that packet capture if they, or if you should wish to. You can also see the applications and the Microsoft Teams, and MIST also has Microsoft Teams integration, that's for a later video as well. So what does all this actually mean? Well, going through this, it is basically the user has entered in the wrong password. Now I'm going to I'm going to go ahead a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit ahead of myself, and I just want to show you something that is very powerful on the Mist platform. See this little little thing down here. This isn't unique. This, this pop up we see these all the time on insurance websites. That's not unique. But Marvis, and this is a later video, and I'm kicking myself right now because I wanted to save it, but it's literally too good not to show. You can, in this Marvis pop-up, it's called the Virtual Network Assistant, ask how, spell it right, how is client 
Dent. And I'm deliberately misspelling there. So how is client Dent, just for example, when Marvis VNA, the virtual network assistant, it has been reinforced via reinforcement learning and machine learning for quite a few years now. And it just knew I was talking about client Denali. It just knew it. And what I didn't say a particular time, a particular time range, I for last seven days, but just note here, ah, this is AI saying this is what I found on May the 2nd at the time I'm doing this video. This client has limited capacity, capacity because of the Wi-Fi interference, and there's also authorization errors. This is what I want to show. So if I just click on authorization errors, we can see, yeah, just for today, not the last seven days, but just for today, 20% of the time they failed on authorization. This is site impact affecting a small number of clients in the five gigahertz band. But note here, the recommendation, click on this and immediately the AI on Marfis says, update the Wi-Fi password on the device that the client has, that Denali has, to match that on the wireless LAN. This is user error. That is powerful. This is how and why AI is such a buzzword because it is solving real world problems, especially in networking. But I just want to claw it back a little bit. I just want to come back to the service level expectations. I don't want to focus too much on Marvis just yet because as you can see, it's a very powerful feature on MIST. I'm not just saying that because again, full disclosure, I do work for Juniper Networks. But hopefully you can appreciate and understand and see why that is so powerful. But coming back to the service level expectations, and don't worry, I'm going to do Marvis on a, on a later video, so you know, stay tuned for that. But you can really see for this particular site, for a live demo, for the last seven days, yeah, successful connects has been okay. Time to connect, I when users have connected to the network within your expectation is good, and so is the throughput, and so is the roaming. Really the big contributing factor that's impacting user's experience is absolutely capacity. I was the capacity of the access points to actually provide a good, stable working experience for those clients to connect to your Wi-Fi network. And you can see this is quite low. This is at 38%. And just as we did before, we have successful connects and it's the same look and feel in terms of the missed user interface. On the right hand side, we've got our classifiers. So under capacity, we can actually see that this is only 38%. So that means if I do the maths correctly, that's 62%. Ah, let me write that again, 62%. That's my uh, pen tool just erasing things automatically. But there's 62% missing in terms of that capacity SLE, that service level expectation. And we could see none of this was due to client count. Oh, there were too many clients connected to the access point. But we can see the number one contributor to that missing 62% is Wi-Fi interference all the way up at 98%. There's also less than 1% due to non-Wi-Fi interference and 2% due to client usage. So this is the main contributor here, Wi-Fi interference. 98% of that missing 62% is on capacity is because of Wi-Fi interference. And I've just selected Wi-Fi interference and we've got the statistics. So this here has, for the users, 93% of the users that have connected to that Wi-Fi network are falling below your service level goal because of that Wi-Fi interference. And this is spread across 12 to 14 access points, I 86%. We can also see the timeline as well. So you can actually see a general trend that it's slowly creeping up, slowly creeping up. And just as before, the number of connected users and were there any system changes, etc. And under distribution, it's the same concept. It's the same look and feel in terms of getting into that root cause. We've got the distribution, which shows the network. I, how is this Wi-Fi interference spread across the network? So we could see what the device operating systems that are being impacted by this Wi-Fi interference. And what's the anomaly? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? So typically anything greater than one it's getting worse in terms of the anomaly. And we can also see the access points that are seeing this Wi-Fi interference. And of course, the wireless LANs, the, the wireless bands, and the device types. So if you're in retail, and Zebra being a common vendor for those handheld scanners, whatever those scanners may actually be doing, we can actually see, Juniper can see how those clients are being impacted by that Wi-Fi interference. And under affected items are the users themselves that are seeing this Wi-Fi interference. 
And so I just quickly clicked on a particular user called How. I've completely not, I've not selected this user before, but again, we've got the summary showing that this particular client has had roaming issues. There's also coverage issues, and also there's capacity issues. 94% of the time that this client is seen, so it's not a site anymore, we're looking at a particular client, and this is absolutely widespread across the site. Live demo for this particular access point within the five gigahertz band. So obviously at that point, there's something wrong with the Wi-Fi channels or something's impacting those Wi-Fi channels. And maybe it's it's too much interference from neighboring access points, from neighboring channels, adjacent channel interference. You know, there's a lot of areas that could fall into Wi-Fi interference, of course. But what Mist AI is doing here is it's giving you that client to cloud visibility. It's giving you the ability to look at a site level or at an access point level or at a client level from a 60 minutes, 24 hours or up to seven days default or even a custom range. All of that rich data, all of that AI insight into what's happening on the network, who's been impacted and are your service level expectations your expectations being met. And as you can see, if not, why not? Who's been impacted by it? Where are they being impacted by it? And what do you need to do to resolve those issues in the first place? And I just want to give a quick summary before we start closing off this video. So under monitor, we can go into those service level expectations for the Wi-Fi, for your wireless network, for the switching network, for the WAN network. And you can look at all those insights up to seven days. So as I mentioned, seven days is more than enough in terms of actionable information to see what users have been impacted by what events on the network. And you can do so at a particular site, AP, client, or even organization wide level. And right down here are the seven service level expectations or SLEs that are included in that wireless assurance license from Juniper Networks missed. So time to connect. In summary, are users connecting to your Wi-Fi network within your expectation, your expected time? Are users actually connecting at all? Yes or no? If not, why not? Coverage. Is there enough coverage on the uplink and on the downlink for your Wi-Fi network from the APs to the clients and back, and do they have a generally good signal? When they're roaming, what's the roaming like? Are they performing fast roaming? Are they performing slow roaming? What's the probabilistic throughput? What's the ideal throughput based on these different service level expectations? What's the capacity like for the access points? Are they overloaded? Do they not have enough clients? Is there Wi-Fi interference? Is there non-Wi-Fi interference? And what's the general health of the APs? But for all of these service level expectations, these SOEs, you can actually see there are the different classifiers for each one of these SLEs. And the classifiers are really classifying out that missing percentage, whether it be 62% here or 20% here, they're classifying for successful connects, as I went into quite a, a bit of insight into, was it due to association? Was it due to authorization? Was it due, due to DHCP? Was it due to ARP? Was it due to DNS? Etc. Etc. And really get down to what was happening on the network and what users were being impacted by that. And using, I've got to mention it again, Marvis VNA, just asking a simple question and getting to that information extremely quickly. And so that's it, everybody. That's the end of this video. That's the end of this part where we've gone into wireless assurance and those service level expectations that you get within the MIST license, within the MIST capabilities for that Wi-Fi network. And just to recap very quickly, those, those seven, seven? <laughs> seven service level expectations. I need to go back to school and do my maths. <laughs> but the seven service level expectations that are within, by default, that wireless assurance. So successful connects, time to connect, coverage, capacity, roaming throughput, and AP health. Blimey, I must be learning because I just remembered them all off the top of my head. But again, MIST is a very, very powerful, capable, and ever-evolving cloud-based microservices platform that is really utilizing 
artificial intelligence because it was just born, it was made with AI in mind and that's how it's excelled through that magic quadrant for enterprise wide and wireless LAN infrastructure. Look it up, I guarantee you there's an interesting story in terms of how it's excelled through the years. But coming back to the SOEs, the SOEs are really defining all that rich data that's come from the APs every minute, and all those connected devices and clients. What does all this data actually mean? And it's making it human readable. It's making it easy for anyone to actually understand and to get to the actionable insights even quicker to identify what do you need to do if you're that operator to resolve those real, real world networking issues, whether it be authorization or DHCP, DNS or roaming capacity, Wi-Fi interference, as we saw, the AI is providing on the MIST platform those rich insights and that marvelous VNA is the ability to ask a question and get to that information extremely quickly. Very powerful. But anyway, as always, I hope you found that useful. Hope you found that informative. If you like this video, if you like my content, please give me a thumbs up. It's the best way to support my channel. Any questions or comments, let me know down in the comments box. I'm loving the feedback, loving the interaction, loving the messages I'm getting from you all. Other than that, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to be going into the Wired and WAN insights in one video. Other than that, thanks for watching and goodbye.